All right, so you purchased a sample pack with some acoustic drum samples and they come in multiple velocity layers or even wrong robins. And you want to know how do I create my own custom drum racks in Ableton using all of those samples. So let me just quickly go through what I mean by that. So I have the Yamaha Hybrid All Samples Pack here. And if I open the snare folder, there we go. I don't just get one single sample. I get, as you can see, a lot of them, um, 16 in total. And what these are, are different velocity layers. So imagine when they were recording this drum kit, right, for sampling. So they had a drummer and they asked him to hit the snare very, very softly, then a little more strongly, all the way up to just slamming it. And each time they recorded a sample of it. And the advantage of doing this is that with real instruments, and drums in particular, you're not just getting more volume out of the instrument when you hit it stronger, you're actually changing the characteristics of the sound itself. So the stronger hits are going to be very snappy with a very pronounced transient, whereas the, uh, you know, softer hits are going to be more even. So the transient is going to be less pronounced. And so you're changing the tonal quality of the sound itself. And so a properly sampled acoustic drum kit, like the one you probably bought or got for free, will have multiple velocity layers. And how to integrate those into your drum rack in Ableton is what we're going to look at today. So here we go. So I have 16 different velocity layers here. And how do I put them into a drum rack? Well, first of all, let's go back into Ableton. And let's drag an empty drum rack onto my first MIDI track here. Right, and usually with maybe um, electronic drum machines that have been sampled that maybe are a single hits pack, right? Where they just have one sound per kind of articulation. So maybe one kick, one snare, a couple toms. It would be as easy as just dragging an instance of Simpler onto the pad you want to assign that specific articulation sample to. So in the case of the snare, it would probably be D1. Boom, now you have your Simpler there. All you would do is you would drag your one snare sample onto Simpler, job done, right? The problem now is we have all these velocity layers and we would like to take advantage of that added layer of realism and authenticity that they provide us with, right? And the problem is Simpler isn't capable of loading multiple samples. You can only load one sample. So um, we're going to have to find an alternative solution to that. So let me just go ahead and delete Simpler. And what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to drag an empty instrument rack onto that pad in my drum rack here. There we go. So the advantage of doing this is that an instrument rack can host several different instruments, right? It's an instrument rack. So I'm going to open the chain pane here. And as you can see, we can drop instruments or samples even directly here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my Simpler, drop it into the rack, and I'm just going to copy it across 16 times so that each instance of Simpler has one of my samples. And don't worry if you only have maybe 10 velocity layers or maybe even just five or three. Um, you know, this applies regardless. And having three is still better than just having one single sample, right? So, um, but before I actually copy Simpler, I want to change one setting. And instead of classic mode, I want to switch it to one shot mode. And what this does is, regardless of the length of the MIDI note that is going to trigger Simpler, so be it a super long note or maybe just a very, very short one, it will play back the sample that we load onto it from start to finish, right? Whereas in classic mode, how much of that sample it will play back, or actually for how long it will play back that sample, depends on the length of the MIDI note. So this would be ideal for like an organ sound, right? So if you had an organ sample, you would like to, you know, when you press the keys on your controller, you would like for Simpler to start playing back that sound. And the moment you release your fingers on the keys, you want it to stop. But with drums, it's different. They generate this burst of sound and then it's gone, right? So even imagine this, imagine a drummer hitting the snare and then keeping their stick on the drum head. It's not going to make the sound longer, right? It's still just going to be this explosion of sound that then immediately stops. And so that's what we want. So no matter if we 
hit simpler with a super short note or with a long note. We wanted to just play back the sample fully and that's it. You know, so I'm gonna set this to one shot and now I can copy simpler and paste it. Select all, copy, paste. Do so a couple more times. And as you can see, we have now 16 instances of simpler, which is perfect for me because again, I have 16 different velocity layers. And so um, if you only have 10, you would only copy 10 uh, instances of simpler. If you only had five, you would only copy five and you know, you get where I'm going with this. So all that's left to do now is to drop those different velocity layers onto their corresponding simpler. So on my first simpler, I'm gonna drop my first velocity layer. And as you can see from the preview here, it's pretty quiet, um, but I will continue dropping samples here. So I'm gonna select the second simpler and drop velocity two on, onto it. Velocity three is gonna go onto my third simpler, and so on and so forth. All right, 15, and finally, 16, the strongest, most violent one of them all. And as you can see uh, in the sample preview here, that initial transient is very much pronounced. And, and yeah, so now we have our different velocity layers, each in its own instance of simpler. Brilliant. But the problem now is that if we were to hit our D1 key or the drum pad that we have assigned to that MIDI note to trigger uh, our snare sound, we would trigger all of those samples at the same time. So the super strong ones, the super quiet ones, and everything in between, we would trigger them at the same time, which would cause a huge outburst of volume and it will clip my channel, it will destroy my speakers, so I'm going to avoid doing that. What we need to do now is we need to tell Ableton when I hit that drum pad or that key very softly with, with a low velocity, I want you to just trigger that instance of simpler that has the corresponding low velocity sample. Whereas when I hit it hardly, I want you to trigger just the instance of simpler that has that high velocity sample and everything in between, right? So we do that by switching over to the VEL pane here. And on the X axis, we see the different possible velocities, right? So right here we have one, the minimum value, 127, the maximum value. And these lines here determine which velocity levels trigger each instance of simpler. And right now, the way this is set up, you can see that every single instance of simpler here has a full, uh, what is this, pink line, meaning that no matter what velocity um, we apply, it will trigger every single instance of simpler, which is not what we want, right? So to solve that issue, there is a very elegant way, which is to just right click here, distribute ranges equally, and look at that. So what we now have is a very beautiful situation in which Velocities that we apply between one and seven, so very, very low velocities, we are just barely hitting that key or drum pad, will only trigger the first instance of simpler, which had the super quiet sample. And as you can see, if we were to apply a velocity of eight, we wouldn't be in that range any longer. We would be in this gray zone, which means we are triggering the second instance of simpler, right? Because that one will react to velocities between eight and 15. And all the way up to our last instance with the strongest, more violent sample where the drummer was just hitting that snare, which will only be triggered by velocity values between 120 and 127. So we're slamming that drum pad or that key pretty hard. So that's it as far as the snare goes. Now, what you would do is you would do the same process uh, for every articulation you have. So for the kick, for the toms, open hi-hat, close hi-hat, cymbals, rise, whatever you have, you would do the same process. So um, to make things quicker, I find that it's easier to just copy our instrument rack over to 
um, the next pad we want to work on. So in this case, I'm choosing C1, which usually represents the kick, so that I have already uh, my velocity layer set up correctly and uh, all my instances of Simper set to one shot as opposed to classic. And all that's left to do really is just drag the new samples because right now we have still the snare samples on the kick pad as well, which we don't want, of course. Rinse and repeat and build your whole kit this way. And it would take you probably less than 10 minutes, I would guess. And then you would have a very dynamic and natural sounding kit where if you play at lower velocities, you're not just playing the same one sample more quietly, uh, which would result in a pretty robotic kind of sound. No, you're actually triggering quieter samples, which not only are lower in volume, but have a different tonal quality to them. And so, yeah, that is it. If you purchase a pack with only different velocity layers, then you're good to go, my friend. You can create your very dynamic and natural sounding acoustic drum racks like this. But if you are lucky enough uh, to have purchased a sample pack, which also has a thing called round robins. Let me show you actually what I mean by that, because um, I have the two. If I go back here to my main folder for the Yamaha Hybrid Kit, you can see that I have the contact pack samples as well. And if we have a look at those, let's go to the kick folder, for instance, choose plastic and have a look at this. So we still have V1, V2, V3 samples, all the way up to V16, like in that other sample pack. But for each one of those velocity layers, we have three different versions. And this is genius because by virtue of being human, right, no matter how good the drummer, they will never hit uh, the snare drum, for instance, or the toms or whatever drum in exactly the same spot each single time. So if it were a snare, for instance, maybe on the first hit, it would be dead center. And the second time they hit it, it would be maybe a millimeter to the left or to the right or to the top, you know, and those small variations help increase the human feel of the kit, the natural sound of the kit. So, um, this is what's called Ron Robbins. And if you purchase a sample pack with Ron Robbins as well, don't worry. I'm going to show you exactly how to incorporate those into your drum racks as well on the next video. In the meantime, I hope this was useful to you. If it was, hit that like button, uh, subscribe as well. And, uh, and yeah, I hope to see you on the next video. Until then, take care.